Hey guys, uh, this is this is amazing. This is such a treat because Liz Wright is in town and um, and sh- and she's here with us right now. Yeah, I'm not even making it up. She's sitting. <laughs> this guys, this is Liz Wright. She uh, uh, incredible uh-huh. intercessor, teacher, prophet. I mean, the stories. That I, if you don't know who she is, you're gonna want to check her out. We'll make sure that we put uh, your website and everything in so everybody can just check okay. out all your resources and because uh, she is just amazing. And, and, and I, Liz, I think this is an incredible timing because yeah. when I, yeah. uh, when we look at everything that's happening in our state, and this is the very first Sunday that we've ever done something like this. Like this is our, our Sunday morning online uh, service. The new way of church, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and just looking at everything that's happening with this virus and like the spirit of fear that that is that is on it i mean literally we're being told like that it's actually illegal to gather it's actually considered criminal activity if more than 250 people gather or if you're under that number and you get together and you cannot prove that you that you set up uh logistical ways for people to be together but be able to stay six feet apart you know like that it's actually illegal to to gather in this time in order to um, control the contagion, you know, kind of factor because this thing is so contagious. So the reason why I'm sa- saying all of this is that Liz carries just this realm of peace and shalom. And I want for her just to be able to just, for the next few minutes, I want for her just to unpack, unload whatever father has put in her heart. But I, I just wanted to kind of frame this thing up as, as far as you are walking in a contrasting spirit as far as what is in it, as far as what the dominant norm is right now within the culture, and that's why I think you're, it's such a gift from God to have mm-hmm. you here on this very first Sunday, this mm-hmm. very first time that we've rolled this out. So, Liz, um, if you just want to talk to the people, feel free just to do whatever you want to do, say yeah. whatever the Father's put in your heart to say. And I know that this is such a timely. Uh, divine appointment yeah. that we're having right here right now yeah he's so good isn't he how we we make our plans right but the lord orders our steps Amen. um i just i want to say this as as a like a procl- proclamation and a prayer to everybody it's i'm praying i'm in agreement with his perspective but i'm saying it as empowerment you know to all of us and I'm, I'm ministering to myself as well but it's i think it's extremely important that we honor authorities, that we pray for authorities, and that we cooperate, of course, but not take our counsel from a spirit of fear. Wow. You know, that's really, really important. So we bless and honor the initiatives that our governments that are there to protect us are trying to put in place, but not be counseled by a spirit of fear, not go under the intimidation and the panic and the demonic swirl that is energizing what's going on. That's right. And so it's really important as God's people that we take time out right now to come back to the feet of Jesus. Let's get back to the one thing, to the most important thing, which is our relationship with Jesus. Many people right now, as we've been traveling around and we're just with the body of Christ, loving the family of God in different places, and particularly here, we've been feeling that attack, that oppressive attack wow, that's right. been coming over our people to weaken our hearts, to cause us to come into a place of exhaustion and unbelief and fear. It's not the attitude of Christ. So it's very important right now that we come back to the Lord's feet. We gaze into his heart again. We look eye to eye, face to face. We worship him until we connect so that he can re-energize us, so that his spirit can fill us up again, power us up again, because he is government. We carry government. We are government in the earth, right? Because of who resides inside of us. And it's so important at this time that we're able to release a clear sound and encouraging comforting, directional sound that's authoritative and filled with faith, that we're not taking our read and living in an attitude of heart that is in response to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To the, the world's perspective is current, a current collection of information. 
we need to live in the truth and then begin to superimpose that perspective over the situation. We begin to, to decree a thing and see it established. So I speak a fresh empowerment into every heart right now that, that Jesus is faith inside of us, that the one who is faith, that will reignite that capacity to believe him again, to have heaven's perspective again, for us to be able to rise up and, and see what is in his heart? What does redemption in this situation look like? To begin to pray from a place of faith, from that high place, you know, ruling over, collapsing the darkness, like, you know, releasing the light, John 1, you know, one of my favorite all-time scriptures, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Amen. So let's get filled up again afresh with with the indwelling Christ, let, let's get reignited in our relationship, our, that, that, that connection again, be filled with power, filled with his mind on the matter, and, be, and to, to close rank around each other at this time, to pray for each other, to rise up again in faith, to steady out, to not be living under the grip of the spirit of fear. We are government. This is our time to shine, That's right? right? That's right. We're to rise up and be the predominant voice of influence in culture, be the solution, be people of faith, to begin to pray and see this thing shut down, this virus gone, the fear, the, en the demonic energizing on it. To sh I mean, the yes, all over the world, I'm encouraging the body of Christ. We're praying that the body of Christ today, we were praying for str fresh strength and fresh mountain moving faith to rise up in the body of Christ. And many of us are, you know, but for those of us that are tired right now, that that will be your experience, that we can rise up and we can begin to decree in agreement with one another and in agreement with the heart of God for his redemptive power to be released in this thing to be shut off. Amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. Was that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I told you she's awesome. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a, what, yeah, come on. Now, Elizabeth, would you be willing to just release, release a prayer and yeah, we'll just go into receiving yeah, mode and yeah, if you could just, yeah. you could just pray for us yeah. here in Washington State as well as yeah. all the other states that are being um, impacted right now that we'd be able to walk in that kind of contrasting spirit and, and state yeah. and status that um, really, because there, there's a temptation to want to be kind of worldly right now and sometimes we think of worldliness as far as like, you know, uh, being silly with specific behaviors, but there's an opportunity to be kind of worldly in our thoughts and to go places that really it doesn't, it does, to go places in our thoughts where those thoughts aren't yeah. the thoughts of Christ. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And so we really that we'd be very heavenly minded yeah. in this. In this. So yeah. if you'd be willing to just release yeah. a prayer yeah. and we'll just, if you're at home, this is what I want you to do. I want you just to put out your hands. Like, like don't just watch the screen, okay? Right. I want you just to put out your hands and just go into a receiving posture. And we're just going to believe that something's going to get released sure. right now. And sure. there's even going to be an atmospheric change. You might even feel a temperature change. Yeah. In, in in your in your in your house yeah. because there's going to be a there's going to be a shift that takes place um, as Liz prays for us. Yeah, I'm good. As I begin to pray, I'm just going to open up a realm, another realm of faith, by just sharing a tiny bit of testimony that's to do with releasing peace. Awesome. In the Hebrew, the word peace, as we understand, is the word shalom. And the word shalom in the Hebrew literally means destroying the authority that's attached to chaos. Wow. So, wow. so wow. I'm going to wow. release that realm through a testimony right now and begin to pray that every one of us reconnects into the person of peace, into the attribute of God's nature that is peace, that his liquid love, his that feeling of complete uh, peace and inner rest, that that will become our experience and that from that place, the Prince of Peace crushes Satan under our feet. Amen. That Amen. we would experience that, that, that shalom, the peace that is Jesus' nature would begin to shut off all the authority that attaches us to chaos. So the chaos begins to shift off our hearts and lives. So just very quickly, as I'm beginning to share this testimony, just listen with your own hearts to Jesus, what he's saying to you through what I'm saying. Just begin to let his 
re let yourselves reconnect to his indwelling spirit, his presence. So when I was first brought into the kingdom, I came into the kingdom of God through a physical visitation from Jesus. When I first saw Jesus in front of me, the light that he is, his nature, as the light of the world was pouring out of his eyes onto me and it was crashing into me and through me as waves of love. And he s reached out his hands to me and he said, come with me, always come and rest with me a while. And as he said it and the light that he is was pouring through me, I was being healed. I, be I was fractured and numb from a life of all sorts of pain as many of us have walked through. And his very presence just began to permeate through me, releasing into every part of my heart, every facet of my life, peace. So I was filled with shalom and all the destruction, the impact of trauma, the things that I'd experienced in my life, the impact of that in my heart, in my mind, in my soul was gone. It was soothed away through the power of his, his spirit, his presence. And holy, I can feel the realm just, whoa, right. like opening up. Wow, wow, <laughs> hey. wow, 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 wow. Just begin to receive <laughs> yeah. right now. Just begin to receive. He's releasing his presence. He's releasing into us, particularly into the hearts of those of us that have been overwhelmed, been intimidated, you know, been knocked sideways by the reports of what's going on in the nations and, and here. You know, and from this place that the media have labeled the epicenter, of this virus, I pray, I am in agreement with heaven, that it will be known as the epicenter of his presence, of his wisdom, of his heart. That's right. You know, the, the, the nations will hear the heart of God afresh from here. That's right. From Amen. Seattle. Amen. Be hearing wisdom, be he he hearing from the epicenter the Lord's perspective regarding this, coming in agreement with that, taking our strategy from our direction on how to pray from Him. So I pray where you've been battered by intimidation and whatever's going on in your life, fear, intimidation, doubt, unbelief, all the impact of the pressure of your lives, of the spiritual climate right now, that well, I can feel it, mm. that all of that will be soothed away by a fresh enveloping a fresh infilling of his love. His spirit is inside each one of us, right? Dispensing life continually, supernatural life continually. So I pray for that soothing peace to yes. flow through each of you that then, whoo, whoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shifting you out from the clutches and the impact of the enemy activity. Show, whoa, whoa, wow. We are coming into our finest hour. We are rising up, releasing the heart of God, radiating the nature of Jesus. It's who we are, right? We're the body of Christ. He wants us to just rest back into the arms of grace, back into his indwelling presence right now and just allow him to reign through us, to radiate through us, to release comfort and healing and deliverance and a perspective that is going to restore hope and faith to people and to calm the storm that fear is whipping up. Fear is never, never, never to be our counsel. Sometimes fear, as we know, masquerades as wisdom. That's right. It's That's right. not. We've got to be really careful right now to notice the drivers in our heart. <coughs> we need to be driven by the heart of God, motivated, led forward by his heart. And right now he's saying, come back to me. So I pray right now yes. for you to be given the grace to come from striving, pain, mm. fear, whatever state you've been in, back into this deep, place of rest, to be restored, to know that deep, deep, deep inside that you will know that you know that you are all is well, that you are safe, you are protected. He is our strong tower. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our prince of peace. He is the Alpha and Omega. He wraps up human history 
into conformity with the counsel of his will. He is bringing us forth to be the perfect reflection of God in the earth. Show, show, show to rule and reign with him. So I pray for you to be able to know this peace, to come back into your, into connection with the reality that you, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are here to reign, to govern in the spirit realm and see the natural circumstances of the earth come into conformity with his spoken intention, with the counsel of his will. So I just release that peace to you now. And I pray that every part of your heart that chaos is attached to will now detach. Detach. Shoo. Holy is the Prince of Peace crushes Satan under your feet and detaches all chaos from you now, from you, your heart, your family, your life. <sighs> wow. And as you lean into him in the boat of your life and you rest, letting him calm the storm, <sighs> that you'll hear his heart that you'll be refreshed. I just pray that you'll be refreshed with a fresh experience of his love all over again. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into peace. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, his whole Come realms on. opened up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. That's so, 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 so We good. win. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And now, and now we'll go to a commercial break or, <laughs> so we can drink a little deeper. All right. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Oh, it's amazing. All right, guys. We're going to dive into the Word of God. We're going to study some scripture together. And the scripture that we're going to study today is Lamentations. You're like, Lama, what? Yep, it's in your Bible. It's Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 uh, to 25. And today we're going to be talking about celebration. And you're like, we can't talk about celebration. Things are like crazy right now. Like now is not a time to celebrate. Well, actually, uh, now is an incredible time to celebrate. If we can learn to celebrate here and now, man, I'm telling you, we'll be able to celebrate at any point in time. And this is what I know about uh, cultures that are able to successfully steward the presence of the Lord well over time. It's because they developed a discipline for celebration. So that's what we're gonna be talking about uh, today. And this is gonna be really good. And, and I'm just praying that as we dive into this, that this makes sense, that no matter how old you are or young you are, uh, uh, no matter uh, uh, what you're going through, that the Word of God will really penetrate our hearts um, in this couple minutes that we have uh, together. So it'll actually reframe the way that we see this week. It'll actually reframe the way that we watch the news. And it'll even um, re-steer perhaps you know, conversations that we can actually point people to Jesus um, instead of participating with the dominant uh, spiritual paradigm, which is fear right now. So this is going to be really good. We're going to dive in. Lamentation chapter 3, uh, verses 21 uh, to 25. But this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of the Lord's loving kindnesses that we are not consumed, because His tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, my inheritance, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in Him and wait expectantly for Him. The Lord is good to those who wait confidently for Him, to those who seek Him on the authority of God's Word. All right, guys, the very first thing that we're going to talk about is that there is a, a, a very important emphasis here within the Scripture of learning to recall, to bring to mind. So that's the very first thing that we're going to pull out of this text. It's time. This is the time where we get to learn to recall. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor Darren? Learn to recall. That means to bring to mind. That means to shift our awareness. And what should we shift our awareness to? That's a good question. How about this? I bring to mind the reality that I have hope. That's the reality. See, a lot of people would say, no, the reality is that coronavirus is freaky and it'd be everywhere and people getting sick. It's spreading across the entire globe. Those are facts, but that's not necessarily the truth. The facts have to submit to the truth, and the truth is this, we've got hope, okay? I like how Paul would say, he's like, hey, when you grieve, don't grieve like those who have lost their hope. Listen, when you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God, that no matter what happens, no matter how cray cray it gets, we are people that do not lose hope. Hope. It says, bring to mind, learn to recall, shift your awareness into the into what? To what we have hope. Hope in what? He says, here we have hope in the Lord's loving 
kindnesses. Sis, 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 sis. It's plural. It's not just a, a hope that we have a gift from God. We have good and perfect gifts from our Father of lights. This is speaking of the generosity of our God, the generosity of our King and Papa and Father. It says we have hope. His loving kindnesses, His tender mercies. Isn't that awesome? His tender mercies. Look at what He says here. That are new every morning. Listen, his love for you, his kindness for you, um, the thoughts that he has for you, they are new like the dew on grass each and every single morning. But here's the thing, you guys, we actually have to learn to recall. We actually have to learn how to, how to bring things into focus. We actually have to learn how to bring into our awareness the truth. The truth is where we find freedom, not in the facts, and so I'm not going to tell you to turn off your TV and to and to and to not listen to any media. What I'm going to tell you is, yep, engage, right? Learn, stay, stay in tune, right? Um, uh, 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 see what's happening, right? But don't allow those facts to lord over you, right? Choose to allow the lordship of His hope and His tender mercy and His kindness and the authority of who He is, allow that to be the banner that flies over you and your family. It allows for an incredible filter that we can have that reframes everything that we engage with, that we are not underneath the chaos. We are seated with Jesus in heavenly places over it. I, I, I. The second thing is that we learn to celebrate. Just declare that. Learn to celebrate. That's what we're learning right now. Celebration is an action. It is. And celebration actually has the, has the ability to traumatize chaos. That when we celebrate, that it creates a frequency of peace that transforms our disposition from the inside out. It's like the kingdom of God begins to come and begins to, um, uh, you know, the kingdom of God is inside of us. That's what Jesus would say. But when we shift our awareness, we, we learn to celebrate. All of a sudden, there is an alignment of honor and thanksgiving and gratitude. And because, look, you can't celebrate somebody if you have dishonor towards them. And you can't celebrate in a situation if your heart is full of panic. So when we learn to celebrate, when we learn this incredible discipline of, of celebration, that celebration brings a recalibration to our soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And again, I'll say celebration brings a recalibration to our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so what we do is when we see things and we start to get a little freaky, when people are freaking out around us, we recall, we bring into awareness and remembrance um, his loving kindness, the fact that we have this hope that cannot be robbed from us, His mercies that are new every morning. And then from that place, honoring that truth, we can begin to respond with gratitude. We can begin to respond with thanksgiving and with praise. And as we do that, it'll bring a recalibration inside of us. And then as we begin to export that praise, that thanksgiving from the inside out, all of a sudden there will be an external recalibration. And that's what we need right now. That's what our cities need. That's what our workplace needs. That's what our families need. And this is the opportunity that we have right now to go to a much deeper place of praise and worship and thanksgiving than we've ever been before. And as you already know, thanksgiving is a radical key that can unlock opportunity. Now, speaking of opportunity, it is so important, number three, that we learn to optimize the opportunity. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago before really all this stuff really hit the fan, right when it was actually starting. And I was, and I was going for a morning run and I was just kind of praying and the Lord spoke to me three things. And he said, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. It's so important that we learn to optimize the opportunity because there are opportunities available right now that were not available last year. Okay, uh, the first opportunity that we have is an opportunity for the gospel to come forth. Listen, um, if you've got peace within your heart, don't take that for granted. There's so many people right now that don't have peace within their heart, that you've got Jesus Christ, the hope of glory residing within you. Don't be selfish with that revelation, but be generous with that revelation. Be willing to share what you know and to give an impartation, which is, I mean, we have been called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. That means that we have been given everything that we need to be diplomats of the kingdom of heaven to bring um, people that believe that they are outsiders and that let them know that Jesus died for them, that they have been created in the image and likeness of God. And there's an invitation from heaven to step into this place, a, an epiphany and awareness of who they really are and who their daddy really 
is. So there's an opportunity for the good news of the gospel. Whenever there's bad news, there's an opportunity for some good news. Let's not be bad news bearers. That sky has fallen. Let's be heralds of the gospel, heralds of good news, oracles of hope. The next thing is that there's an opportunity to learn new things. Uh, incredible couple in our church, Phil and Jane Seton, right? Like they are overseeing the remodel of the church. They're doing such a great job. Sanctuary is looking so gorgeous. But I was chatting with Phil this, this last week and Phil was telling me that he was recalling the, the Great Recession because of the housing collapse and the mortgage kind of thing that took place back in 2008 and 2009 that really affected his building, his construction company. And he determined in that time he was going to leverage the opportunity within that crisis and become a student again. And he began to learn how to do all kinds of new things, things that he used to subcontract out. And guess what? When we went, when we came out of that recession, now uh, uh, Seaton Construction, now his construction company, they were now tooled to do new tasks and they were able to do things as an organization. They were now postured for a new level of prosperity because of how they positioned themselves um, uh, for opportunity within the chaos. And this is what the Lord is saying, hey, right now is a great time to learn some new things. Right now is a great time to address those barriers that have kept you from being obedient to what the Lord's been calling you to do. It's a great time uh, maybe to even go back to school. It's a great time to start watching some YouTube videos, to do some e-courses. It's a great time to reevaluate your goals, your objectives. Um, it's a great time to reevaluate your career path. It's a great time to, to begin to revisit your resume. It's a great time. Um, to begin to just seek the Lord in a place of intimacy and get His His strategy for your present and future, this is a great opportunity to learn, okay? And uh, the last, uh, well, I got a couple more things. Another th thing is this is a great opportunity to serve some people, right? There's people that really need a lot of help right now. You're like, well, I don't even know who those people are. Hey, um, God will speak to you. Um, this is an, uh, is an opportunity for divine opportunity, for divine appointments. So if, it, if it's been your desire that you want, you want to be a little Todd White and be running around giving words of knowledge and healing the sick and, and all that, hey, now is the time. Okay, now is the time, okay? And what does that mean? It means that you just say to the Lord, hey, I'm ready for divine opportunity. I'm ready for your, divine means directly from heaven. So you just pray, God, I, I pray you bring some people my way, people that need to be served, and I'll be ready to wash some feet. And if that's your desire, the Lord will honor that desire. The next thing is, hey, it's an opportunity to position yourself intentionally for when this whole thing is over. Personally, I don't think we should treat this thing like a blizzard. I think we need to treat this thing like a season. I think we need to be thinking about the next three months and really positioning ourselves with wisdom for the next three months. And three months is a season. And I think that that is good news uh, because the whole uh, mortgage crisis and that whole recession, man, that thing lasted for a couple of years, right? But I think if we can be wise and look at the next three months, and really position ourselves well, that when this thing blows over, when we come out of it, that we can be we can be ready to engage with a level of intentionality and energy and fierce focus, perhaps to a degree that we've never had before. If we can have fierce, radical focus in this season, we will be able to engage with a, with a tenacity that's perhaps unprecedented anytime within our own lifetime or maybe within our own family line. It's time to really lean into the Father, to really hear what He has to say, to, to obtain that fresh blueprint and scroll that He has for us. It's an opportunity for us to learn, to grow, to connect in a place of fellowship and then get ready because this thing's gonna shift. And when it does, the, the floodgates are gonna open wide. I'm telling you, the nets are gonna go into the water and we are gonna see unprecedented growth, unprecedented power and unprecedented opportunities. And so this isn't a word uh, just for Darren, okay? This is a word for the body of Christ. This is a word for Seattle Revival Center. Get your nets ready. Now is not the time to be partnering with the spirit of fear and panic that would get us really just to sit back and, and eat pizza and drink beer and get lazy and, and, and to quit exercising and just go into a place of apathy and lethargy and slumber. No, absolutely stinking not. This is a season of awakening. We will preach Jesus Christ. He is our message. Why? So that every heart that every heart in the Northwest, that every heart in Seattle, there is an opportunity for every person to be awakened 
to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. Guys, that's what we're stinking going after, right? Like, we're not in this thing just to entertain people. We're not in this thing just to make people feel good. We're in this thing that there would be unprecedented numbers of people that have their awakening moment that can be able to articulate their own awakening story that I once was lost, but now I am found. I believed I was an orphan, but now I've discovered I'm a legitimate son and daughter of the Lord Most High. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm cheering you on. I love you guys. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the fire of God will come right now into every home. Father, I pray that your fire, Lord, that your that the furious fire of your love would just become would come right now. It would just begin to fill people afresh right now. That where there has been fear, that it would get displaced and purged right now by the fire of your pure perfect love and God I pray for discernment I pray father for ears that hear and eyes that see that we would not miss out on any opportunity I pray father I declare divine appointments opportunities for the good news to begin to come up and out of us in a natural organic kind of way father I thank you Lord that there is no uh, uh, GMGs no genetically modified gospel but that the truth of your good news would begin to really come out of us, that, that, that the word of the Lord would be like a sharp two-edged sword. It would come from our mouth and that we would see radical freedom um, uh, taking place, that there'd be executions of your justice through the righteous in this season, through the people of God. Father, I pray, Father, for a fresh anointing on our children. I pray, Father, for a fresh anointing on our grandchildren. I pray, Father, for a fresh radical fire on every grandma and grandpa that are watching right now. And Father, I thank you that we are living and residing, Father, in this Psalm 91 refuge place. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we are in you, that you are in us. And Lord, I thank you, Father, um, that this coronavirus is going to die and fry and go back to hell where it came from. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Love you guys.